We continue our march through Season 1 of Girls on Panther this week with another character analysis. I tell you who to guess who it is this week, but seeing as you're watching the video, you already know it's one whose character cannot be contained. No official sponsor this week, but this video is brought to you by my upcoming original manga, Amaranth Angels. Cue anime girls, starfighters, and exciting space battles. Written by a Girls on Panzer fan, for other Girls on Panzer fans, and fans of military Mori in general. The Kickstarter is already funded, but I'll be launching a second chance campaign on Indiegogo soon, so if you miss out, there'll be another chance to get in on the action. Look forward to an announcement on that front soon. Now, on to the video. If you've been following my Girls on Panzer analysis videos so far, I'm sure you knew this one was coming soon, following the chronological path of Season 1. So today, we'll be taking a look at the character of our favorite mini-Stalin with a Napoleon complex, the Great Katyusha. A character who might seem very straightforward, but who has more going on than most might expect. As always, here's your quick spoiler warning, since we'll need to mention the outcome of the Ori vs. Pravda battle here, and also some stuff from their film and DOS finale. So, Katyusha. She's probably one of the most well-recognized Girls on Panzer characters, though perhaps not by name, among non-fans of the show. That's largely due to this meme that's made the rounds multiple times over the years. And I'm pretty sure I saw it more than once myself before I discovered Girls on Panzer. As with all the characters in the show, Katyusha manages to make a strong enough impression, even with relatively limited screen time, that she's extremely memorable. However, the same things that can easily make a supporting character like her instantly memorable also carry the risk of turning her into a one-note character. Fortunately, Katyusha, kind of like the student council early on in Girls on Panzer, is a result of the creators of the show knowing their genre, and what sort of character types often appear in sports stories. And that's what the viewers might be expecting. So they put a new spin on it. When we first see Katyusha, and interestingly, possibly because of her miniature status, we're not actually shown her earlier outside of the OP, with Nona being used as a more intimidating figure representing Pravda, Katyusha seems positioned to be a character we've seen before in sports stories. The overconfident, haughty opponent who's rather nasty and belittling toward our upstart heroes. Her reaction to learning that it's Miho she'll be up against, and then basically everything about her first meeting with the Orori team, sets her up as someone we want to dislike and root against to see her brought low when Orori pulls out the victory. But even this early, the writers, and of course the animators since the visuals matter a lot too, are letting on that she's not really that sort of character. This is of course done through the sillier moments surrounding Katyusha, where her somewhat chuny, aggressive, and confident persona is undercut by her being a bit of a mess with a Napoleon complex. Of course, she is extremely competitive, and gets perhaps a bit too into it at times. But kind of like we've already seen earlier in the season with Alisa, that fierce competitiveness isn't inherently a bad thing. Katyusha is just, in a very chuny way, really embracing her school Soviet influence when it comes to many things. And fans don't call her Mini Stalin or Lolly Stalin for nothing. But again, this side of her is counterbalanced by the fact that she, despite being one of the older characters in the show, she's among those who will soon be graduating as of Das Finale, Katyusha is kind of childish, with Nona more than happy, perhaps a bit too happy based on some of the interactions in Dream Tank Match, to take on a motherly role at times for her commander. And Clara as well, though we don't meet her till later. However, as much as Katyusha is used for humorous moments, she isn't just a joke character. Far from it. She's a commander to be taken seriously, and worthy of respect as an opponent and essential participant. Her ego-driven blunders like the little ceasefire stunt aside. It's not for nothing that Pravda won the previous year's tournament, made it to the semifinals here, and reached the quarterfinals in Das Finale. They're a serious team to be reckoned with, and Katyusha is a big part of that. We see this most clearly in their film, in that iconic scene I already discussed in its own video, where all the Pravda members of the Ori conglomerate team sacrifice themselves to save Katyusha. That's not just done out of blind loyalty, and it's not because Nona and Clara are just simping. They do it because they truly believe that the overall team benefits more by having her survive. That sort of sacrifice is earned by a leader who is genuinely loved and respected by her subordinates. Ironically, a rather unstalin like thing from our mini Stalin here. She also comes off as quite competent in the opening match of their film. Despite the attitude Jovan puts out, Katyusha actually does care about other people, in her own way. She wouldn't have come to help Orori out in their film otherwise. And she's more than willing to learn from people like Miho when it comes to Senshiro, as we see later on. Furthermore, even when she's very disappointed upon defeat, Katyusha doesn't forget the sportsmanship inherent in Senshiro. While she's still visibly not happy to have lost, she still chooses to come shake Miho's hand afterward, from ground level, and not atop Nona's shoulders. 
But more than anything else, I think the contrast between Katusha's mini Stalin act and her more childish, is girlfriend an appropriate term here? I'm behind on my Zoomer slang, tendencies, just make her always engaging when on screen. There's also the running gag of her not understanding Russian. But behind the funny is someone smarter than she often gets credit for. Someone who has earned the unquestioning loyalty of her subordinates and a formidable tank commander. Remember, her initial tactic utilized against Ori in Pravda's battle against them worked pretty much perfectly. And even after Ori began their comeback following Miho's unpredictable breakout from the church, Katyusha, while clearly frustrated, didn't lose her head at all. Rather, she reorganized her forces and, ultimately, came about as close to winning as possible, though Pravda obviously came up a bit short. And from what we see of Pravda's Das Finale tournament battles, the tactics she employs are quite sound, and she utilizes her team members very well. Most certainly not a joke character, despite featuring in quite a few funny moments throughout the series. This piece of fan art, at least I think it's fan art, I think is a great illustration of who Katusha really is beyond her Chuni, Soviet-inspired persona. It's a depiction of the pre-match meeting between her and Erika in Das Finale, with Katyusha recognizing the pressure Erika is under as the new captain of her team, injecting a bit of levity with a little snow caricature of Erika. Because while she can be aggressive, hyper-competitive, and harsh-sounding to both her opponents and subordinates, deep down, like all other sensual competitors in Girls and Panzer, she does believe in the sportsmanship ethic that's core to the sport and cares about other people. As I mentioned above, another show, less well-written and without the unfailingly positive approach to both people and competitive sports that we see here, would have cast someone like Katusha as a minor villain to be defeated and humiliated. Here, she, for the most part, graciously accepts her defeat, and immediately befriends our main heroine, then becomes a beloved supporting character we enjoy seeing succeed. So basically, peak girls and Panzer. If you enjoyed this video and like to support me and what I do here, my books and light novels are all available on Amazon. And you can get early access to videos, sneak peeks, and updates on my upcoming manga and other projects by subscribing over on Patreon. And while the Amber Nadal's Kickstarter was successfully funded a while back, I will be launching a secondary campaign relatively soon to give anyone who missed out another chance to get on board. And as always, if you have any thoughts on this video or is anything Girls on Panzer related you'd like me to talk about, make sure to share them below in the comments section. I'd love to hear them, and while I might not get to respond to every comment, at least not in a timely manner, I can guarantee that I read each of them. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any future uploads. That's all for now, so until next time.